finally, in 1921, there came an end to the 10 years of death and destruction. Mexicans celebrated an important anniversary of their independence from Spain. They celebrated with an exuberance that had been absent for years. Mexico had a new president, the victorious general of the revolution, Álvaro Obregón. He began to rebuild the country. In this climate of relative peace, Mexicans began to take stock of what they had been through and to conceive a new identity as a nation. Obregón started a state-sponsored cultural renaissance that made Mexican art famous worldwide. The government commissioned artists to paint huge public murals with strong messages. The vanity of the aristocracy at the time of Porfirio Diaz oblivious to the revolutionary forces about to explode around them. The horrors and hardships of the revolution. The glories of its peasant heroes. The muralists established a new identity for Mexico, one that did not reject Mexico's Indian past. The revolution was won by the peasants and by groups of the urban middle class. And in this coalition, what they wanted was to create a strong national identity. And this could be done through art. That's why art forms flourished. And the main statement that was made through this art was that the culture of the pre-Hispanic past was very valuable. The muralists illustrated the sense of wonder that even the Spanish had felt about the civilization they were soon to conquer. What Bernal Diaz, the chronicler of the conquest, felt when he first saw the great Aztec cities in 1519. We followed the causeway, which is eight yards wide and so straight to the city of Mexico that I do not think it curves at all. There were great cities, all made of stone, with such wonderful sights to gaze on we did not know what to say or if what we saw before our eyes was real. We were astounded at the swarm of people buying and selling and the quantities of merchandise some of our soldiers, who had been in Constantinople and in Rome, said that they had never seen a market so well laid out, so full of people. As they glorified the Indian civilizations, the muralists vilified the Spaniards. The conqueror, Hernán Cortés, was depicted as a twisted caricature of evil. But in the end, the muralists recognized that the fusion of the conquerors and conquered had created a new people, the Mestizo people of Mexico. In the 1920s, Mexicans succeeded in establishing a new national identity. But to build and govern a new nation, they needed more than a sense of who they were. They needed an infrastructure and national institutions. 
This became the mission of President Obregón's successor, Plutarco Elias Calles. Yo admiro también mucho al presidente Calles. I also admire President Calles because he established the institutions to put in practice the objectives of our revolution. Calles created an authority to manage hydroelectric projects, power for Mexico's development. He created a national bank to finance government projects including Mexico's first highways. But Calle's greatest contribution was to the nation's political stability. When his term ended in 1928, former President Obregón was the only man strong enough to succeed him. Obregón was elected, then assassinated, before he could assume office. More than a decade after the last great battles of the revolution, violence threatened to consume Mexico again. Mexico's countryside was still run by regional strongmen. Local insurrections were common. There was no central political system capable of holding the country together. To keep Mexico from slipping back into anarchy, Calles contrived a political solution. He united the factions of the revolution into a single party, the precursor of the one that has dominated politics until today. It was known then as the National Revolutionary Party. To understand the meaning of the founding of the PNR, the Partido Nacional Revolucionario, one can imagine Caius calling the generals and telling them, first of all, put the guns on the table. And then we have to start talking. We must arrange, we must come to a political arrangement uh, that can assure us a peaceful succession of power. It's a matter of words and reason, not of bullets. Calles took personal charge of the new party and asserted control over Mexican politics. A series of presidential figureheads either did his bidding or were forced to resign. Calles became known as the Jefe Maximo, the highest chief. In 1933, General Lazaro Cardenas was the candidate for president. Cardenas would not be another figurehead. He became one of the most powerful Mexican presidents and the most popular. I admire General Cardenas because he breathed new life into the revolution. He really gave momentum to land reform and to the labor movement. He modernized the revolutionary party Calles had founded. And to us Mexicans, he is the symbol of nationalism. Cardenas consolidated the Mexican political system. He began to organize peasants into an official sector of the party. For workers, the mid-30s was a time of strikes. Cardenas tried to control labor by incorporating unions into an official party federation, the CTM. Its president today was a labor leader in the 30s, Fidel Velázquez. It was precisely during his time that the CTM was formed. It enjoyed the support of General Cardenas and his government. Though the CTM emerged from the will of the workers, of course, he did a lot for the workers. He enforced the labor laws provided for in the Constitution. But 
But some unions and political groups resisted being harnessed to the CTM or to the official party. All peaceful so far, suddenly a clash. And in a flash, the palace square is in turmoil with fists and sticks of lines. <laughs> Two dead, many wounded. Mexico fears the worst is not yet over. Former President Calles opposed the policies of Cardenas and tried to reassert his power. Complex forces stir in Mexico as 80,000 workers support President Cardenas and oppose former President Calles. Airplane propaganda backs the Cardenas New Deal while the excited crowd demands Calles be expelled. Banners caricature Calles, and communists, union workers, and farmers urge that the program of the revolution be continued under President Cardenas' guidance. For the present, Mexico believes President Cardenas will win. Lazaro Cardenas did win. He had enough support to have Calles escorted out of the country to the United States. Cardenas put Calles on a plane, sent him in exile to Los Angeles, and said, the president of Mexico has power for six years. He has authority for six years, but he is not manipulated by anybody else, and he cannot succeed himself or manipulate the presidents that succeed him. So he cleansed the political process of Mexico. It's another thing we owe to Cardenas. Cardenas was now unchallenged. A powerful president presided over a powerful party, one that encompassed large sectors of society. Mexico had a stable political system. It's first since Madero began the revolution against Porfirio Diaz in 1910. And that's the irony. Madero starts a democratic revolution to limit power. Cárdenas ends the cycle by enlarging, enlarging presidential power to an amount that Porfirio Díaz didn't dream in his wildest dreams. It had perhaps some merit of some kind of stability, but it had the seeds of the, the very deep and serious problems that Mexico was going to face afterwards. In the mid-1930s, Cardenas used the power of government for programs that endeared him to Mexico's campesinos. Mexican farmers celebrate the greatest land distribution in the history of their country. Cardenas delivered to the campesinos what the 1917 Constitution had promised, what many had fought for under Zapata. After the revolution, there was nothing. Then, who is the one who gave us water? He ordered that every village figure out the boundaries of the plots and then they would dig irrigation ditches here and there. When General Cardenas became president, truly there was nobody in Mexico who cared so much for the campesinos and all the people. He gave us dams so we could have irrigated fields. We used to pay rent for the land to the Lord of the Hacienda. We paid rent for the land that was ours. Now each one has his own plot. I have about four hectares. 